Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, perfect. Okay, so there are uh, two people who are here from the AS class that I just took. So I'll be going through the introduction uh, part once again. Okay, so let me share my screen and uh, let me know if you can see it one second. All right, so is my uh, screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, per perfect, perfect. Okay, so uh, this will be an A2 level physics class, right? And we'll be following uh, the topics that are specifically in the A2 level syllabus. So uh, I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Basil, Basil Abdul Majid. I'll just write it down over here. And I am a physics uh, graduate, theoretical physics graduate from NUST in uh, Pakistan. I have also worked uh, in NUST in the physics department recently as a graduate teaching assistant where I have been conducting problem solving sessions. We call them recitation sessions uh, and uh, teaching some classes and all. So I, I also have approximately of a five, uh, five years of teaching experience as well. I just use t.e for teaching experience. Right, so I'll start by basically telling you about, this is a demo lecture and so we'll start by getting to know each other and everything. So I'll start by telling you uh, where did my uh, physics journey begin? Why, uh, why did I even choose to pursue uh, physics at the, in the first place? Uh, it really started when I was uh, doing, uh, uh, I was finishing my O-levels and I was about to start my AS, A-levels. I did the, uh, I did my uh, A-levels, O-levels and most of my education except from university education. I did it from uh, Saudi Arabia, KSA. And uh, so my, my interest in physics basically developed because I, I was randomly uh, watching videos on YouTube and I came across this a documentary of Sir Isaac Newton and, uh, and I was intrigued by the documentary. And so that, uh, that basically took me to uh, even more uh, videos. Uh, so it, it went on to Albert Einstein and, and so on, right? So that's where it started from. I started reading popular uh, books, uh, science books, and uh, but eventually you you see that uh, you don't have everything that is uh, covered in those popular science book books. So what you do is uh, you read them, you get interested, and then when you start doing physics for real. Uh, for real, I, I I mean, you know, you get into its technicality and and uh, and to be honest, uh, without mathematics, you cannot uh, do physics at all. So, uh, in the in those science books, it's just mostly philo philosophical things in those popular science books. Anyway, uh, so that's where it started from, and then I started um, I started my uh, degree in computer engineering from GK. But uh, unfortunately <laughs> that happened uh, because uh, my parents, they wanted me to uh, pursue engineering, but uh, I left that uh, one year, I, I stayed there. I did uh, one year of uh, computer engineering and then I left and I uh, came to NUST to pursue theoretical physics. Anyways, uh, that's this, and uh, my research uh, interests are in uh, quantum field theories mainly, uh, but you can uh, include string field theories and uh, 
um, a general relativity, gauge theories of gravity, and so on. So that's what I have recently also been working on. Uh, I've been working on uh, general relativity as a quantum field theory, but these things might uh, go over your head. I'm just using some fancy names. So, you know, sometimes uh, some people like uh, fancy names and it sparks uh, the interest of a person. Anyways, I would also like to hear from you all. Uh, where are you from? When are you taking your uh, session? Uh, this uh, A2 physics session, is it October, November this year or next year, May, June? And what time zones are you from? And everything. So you can uh, speak up now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Sir, I'm from Karachi. Uh, I'm opting for physics uh, in May, June, 2023. Right, right, right. Okay, amazing. So uh, what's your name? I cannot, uh, uh, like on the screen, I cannot see who's speaking right now. Omar, sir. Oh, right, right. Okay, okay. Amazing. Nice, nice. Okay. So any more volunteers who would like to speak up? Also, I would like to know uh, your uh, interest in physics. Uh, are you passionate about it, or or uh, or you or you avoid it? You know, some people they they find physics really hard. Some people find it really easy as well. So, uh, are you passionate about physics? Do you uh, what do you what are your uh, feelings towards physics? Sometimes it is easy and sometimes very difficult. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. So, okay. So yeah, it's uh, it's like that. It's like that sometimes. Um, the problem with physics is, I'll tell you, to be honest, is that you have to think a lot. You have to imagine things. And it requires, it basically requires imagination and a lot of imagination and uh, some people some people find that very easy to imagine things some people uh, they some 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 of them they don't even have the time to you know think about these things anyway uh, we i'll well let's talk a bit more about this Okay, so, so we'll first, uh, let me just first write down this, uh, this thing, this, uh, the pattern that we'll be following, how we'll be going along our lectures and everything. So we'll basically, we'll be doing this, uh, that from Monday to Thursday, we'll be mainly focused towards uh, the theoretical or theory part of, or the conceptual part, you can say, of your uh, course. And of course, we'll be sol doing examples. We'll be doing examples. We'll be solving some problems and all. So that's what we would be doing. We'll be doing in uh, from Monday to Thursday. On Friday, specifically, I would be, uh, we'll keep this for questions, right? So what I mean by this is, I'll be answering your questions. We'll be doing uh, we'll be doing past papers on Friday. We'll be focused on uh, past papers, and so what what will happen is that when we are doing this uh, Monday to Thursday, we are doing lectures, we are doing some problems and everything, and uh, of course you'll have some questions. And uh, maybe not during the lecture, maybe and definitely maybe also during the lecture, and you can. Uh, stop me and you can ask your ask your questions anytime that you feel that you don't understand something you can stop me right there and you can ask your questions uh, suppose that you have asked your questions and everything and uh, then later on when you go th through your notes again and uh, you look at your concepts again and then you have some questions more questions so you can note them down you can post them in the WhatsApp group as well. 
uh, for example, let's say you're solving a problem and you cannot, you have a, a problem in that problem basically. But uh, so you can just share, if you share that uh, question on WhatsApp group, right? And so try to do it before Friday so that I can, I can, I can, ha I'll have the time to go through those uh, questions and then we'll uh, sit down and we'll solve or discuss them on Friday, the class that we will have on Friday. Right, so that's this. And questions are very important. You have to ask questions. Don't hesitate. Uh, nobody's judging you over here. Uh, what, whatever problem that you have, feel free, be open, and just fire away, right? So again, uh, my uh, way of teaching is that I like to become a student with all my students and then look at things from their point of view because if i if i am a student in this class what i'll be doing is i'll 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 understand uh, where you might be having problems what things i should elaborate more on and your questions would be more understandable to me in that way so that's how i like to do it right so that's this. Any uh, questions so far uh, from whatever we have discussed right now? Anything that you have to add to it, or maybe you want you're confused or you want to ask something? No, sir. Okay, great. So Right. Okay, so uh, at this point, there is this problem uh, in this uh, Zoom. Uh, I, I, I don't have uh, this access to host this meetings for more than 40 or 45 minutes, I think it is. So uh, hopefully this problem will get resolved by tomorrow. And we can pick up the pace and uh, we'll start with chapter one properly, which is of uh, motion in a circle, I think, right? Circular motion, basically. And, uh, so we, what we can do is we can start the topic right now, but before I go into that, uh, I think I, 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 I have already asked you this, right? Uh, if, uh, do you find physics uh, boring? Any of you, any of you who thinks it's just boring or like it's just too many equations and like it's, it goes above my head completely. Okay, nothing. Okay, so what I wanted to do was I was going to uh, describe some uh, frameworks in which we uh, do physics and the one that you are studying right now, it's more or less, it's just Newtonian mechanics. And uh, then there are more uh, frameworks as well. Uh, we will we'll start it in this way that you know we have a newtonian mechanics is a framework in which you can do physics so it's a very basic and a very limited framework where uh, you use your law newton's laws and you solve your systems but it's a very limited framework let me give you an example suppose that if your speeds are approximately close to the speed of light that's where newtonian mechanics fails and it has no real uh, answer to that problem. So that's when uh, we uh, use something else, another framework, and that's special relativity. Now, special relativity is a framework that allows uh, calculations, you can calculate and you can work physics, work with physics of particles that are moving uh, at or very close to the speed of light. And then, and then what is another thing that you can have? 
we have atoms, we have uh, par electrons, we have subatomic particles. And those particles cannot be described as well properly using Newtonian mechanics. You need something else, and that something else is uh, quantum mechanics. I don't know if you have heard the name. Uh, it's actually, a, you might know quantum physics and quantum mechanics is just the same thing, quantum physics. And you use quantum mechanics to describe uh, the world or the universe of very small. And so there should, there is always a correspondence principle, you can say, which can take you from SR back to Newton's uh, Newton, Newtonian mechanics. And that correspondence principle for this case from going from SR to Newtonian mechanics is uh, when your speeds are smaller than the speed of light. That's when you, go, you can go back to Newtonian mechanics and you can use the Newtonian mechanics framework without any problem whatsoever, right? And similarly for quantum mechanics, you can go to Newtonian mechanics if your, uh, well, there are many ways to state this. Uh, I'll just state it in something that you will understand more uh, when the size of your particles uh, is large. So you can use Newtonian framework. What about the fact that if your particles are very small and they are moving with a very fast speeds, this, so their speeds are approximately uh, closer to the speed of light. That's when you need another framework and that is called quantum field theory. And so this is basically combining quantum mechanics and special relativity. And it's actually even a very, uh, it's kind of, you can say it's a recent uh, theory or it's a recent framework in which we work. Anyways, uh, so what we will be, or what you uh, mo focus more on in your AS uh, O levels in A2 physics is Newtonian mechanics. And then you go, you go to your university and if you're, uh, even if you're doing any uh, pre-engineering course or uh, you're doing engineering in your university or you're doing uh, mathematics or physics, for example, uh, you take very basic courses in the first semester. You take a mechanics, the course of mechanics or sometimes it's called applied physics and you use Newtonian mechanics for the most part of it. And then you go, if you're, if now if your career, or if your education is in physics itself, it's deep uh, focused in physics, so you're doing a degree in physics, then you move into these things. Uh, you learn about special relativity, quantum mechanics, and uh, if you want to, you can also pick a course of quantum field theory. And so these are, so what you're doing right now, Newtonian mechanics, it's a very limited framework. And so if you want to learn about things uh, more deeply and, you know, understand things um, in a much more real uh, life situation way, then you need uh, to understand special relativity, quantum mechanics, uh, and then even quantum field theory and so on. Anyways, uh, this was just me telling you about some, uh, to trying to get you interested into uh, physics. I guess what we should do uh, from this point now is let's uh, start with the first chapter of A2 uh, physics. Uh, wait one second. Let me, okay, perfect. So before I do this, again, I'd like to ask you if there is any question. Up until now, any question? I don't think we, we, we really did not go into uh, the chapter or the course specifically. So there might not be any questions. But if there is, you can ask, right? So anyways, Let's start with the first uh, chapter of A2 physics, which is chapter six of your uh, textbook, and that's motion in a circle. So 
well basically uh we discuss in this uh, the kinematics of our circular motion uh uniform circular motion we will uh, talk about centripetal accelerations we'll talk about centripetal forces and uh it's more focused only towards uh you have something that is moving in a circle and what's keeping this uh ball or you can say a particle what's keeping it uh in this motion it's what's keeping it in moving in a circle so we'll need some uh we'll need some quantities we'll need some things to uh to study these this kind of uh this kind of kinematics and so we'll start with something that is called the angular displacement and angular displacement we'll use the appropriate units to represent angular displacement or angles uh is radians now radians is just an si unit for your measuring angle and so suppose if your angle is theta then you can also relate there should always be if you're so for example let me give you an example if you are using uh, kilograms and uh, grams so there is a, always a relation from going from kilograms to grams and then from grams to kilograms similarly if you are using the radians unit for angle then you should be able to relate it to the degrees unit for the angle and it's done so by uh, that in one complete revolution an object rotates through 360 degrees or 2 pi radians which just means that pi radians uh, it's pi rad is equal to 180 degrees right so uh, okay can you tell me uh, if there is uh, you have this thing where it says uh, this much time is left for the meeting not yet you cannot see the time of meeting how much time is left okay o already 25 minutes gone um, that means around 15 minutes left right okay okay okay, okay. so right so we have pi radians is 180 degrees so that's the relationship between radians and degrees so we have that uh, when an object is moving in an angle with respect to the center of the rotation the angle theta is known as the angular displacement so what that means is uh, you have so something is bound to this center point right and it's moving about this center so it will move like this so suppose that this is your uh, reference line and you measure the angle from this reference line so whatever distance that this moves in this direction right you can measure the angle from this reference line and that would be the angular displacement of this ball that has been, that is moving so let's call it a ball or let's call it a particle whatever right so that's your angular displacement that's how an angular displacement is defined so if if i have something that's a, that's a defined as angular displacement then i can define what is called the angular velocity so it is how fast does your displacement changes the angular displacement how fast does the angular displacement changes is called the angular velocity omega and it's represented with omega where you can mathematically write it as uh, the uh, ratio of your angular displacement to time now if you have Uh, a one complete revolution which just means that suppose it starts from this point a and it moves in a circle and it comes back to its po this point a then that's one complete revolution and for that the angular uh, velocity is defined uh, as 2 pi over t where t is the time period and the fact that we have this time period over here it comes from this thing that uh 
time period is basically defined as the time it takes for your body to complete one complete revolution, which was uh, defined over here, right? So starting from one point and coming back to that point in a circle is defined as a complete revolution. Right, so next we have a linear velocity. Now, what is linear velocity? If you have something that is moving in a circle, so something is keeping this uh, particle moving in a circle. So let's just try to draw it over here. And suppose at this point, suppose that there is some string that is attached to this ball or a particle and it's keeping it moving in a circle. What if this string goes away? The string vanishes. What would happen at that point? Suppose that it was moving in this direction. Can you tell me what would happen if I just remove the string or someone just cuts the string off? What would happen to this particle? Uh, it will no Can longer you... move in a circular motion. Yeah, but uh, how would it, how, what would be its behavior then? Uh, as soon as I cut this, what, where does this uh, particle go? Will it fall back to the ground or what? Anything you can you can say, uh, even if uh, your answer is wrong, uh, nobody's judging you here, right? Nobody's judging anyone here. If your answer is wrong, you'll learn something. Uh, you might have the correct answer in your head and you're just not saying it. So uh, just say whatever is in your mind. What do you think? You, uh, would happen to this uh, ball? It would go like I, blind. It would go flying away. Yeah, exactly. So it would it would go flying. So it would go in this direction. And this, uh, let me just draw it properly. So it would, if it were moving like this in this direction, right? If it were moving like this, then the tangential component is this thing, right? So it would go straight in this direction. So for, uh, but now if it were at this point and then the string was cut, then the string was cut. And again, we know that it's moving anti-clockwise. So what would happen? It would go flying in this direction. If I cut the string off. So the velo with which velocity does it go flying in this direction is known as the linear velocity and it's represented with V. So that's the linear velocity. And it is also, uh, you can use the word instantaneous velocity at any point on this circle. Because as soon as you cut that string off with that particular velocity, it would go flying off in the direction corresponding to the which direction it was already moving in the angular velocity. So is this thing clear? Is the linear velocity, uh, do you understand what linear velocity is? Or is there any question? No, sir. Right, okay. So, so linear velocity, it is defined mathematically as the arc length over time that it takes to move to that point, right? So we have uh, this thing, we have V linear velocity, it is defined as uh, why am I writing it down? It's mentioned over here already. So it's the arc length. And we know from, you know, from mathematics that arc length is simply R times theta. Uh, it, 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 do, you, uh, do you have any problem in understanding what arc length is? Or do you know what an arc length is? It's just, uh, so suppose you have this angle theta over here. And this is the arc that it forms. And so this, the length of this 
region is the arc length. And you can find that by simply uh, multiplying this length with the angle theta. And so if this length is r, then you have r times theta is this, the length of this arc. Right, so, so what happens, why is it arc length over time taken? The reason for that is because if it was moving in some direction, right? So what you do is, uh, suppose it's at this point and initially before, just before that it was at this point. So what happened is uh, it would have the velocity that it would have had between these two points, this region. So what you do is the time it takes for this, uh, this uh, particle to move from here to here, where you just cut this string off is the time taken and the length of this path was the arc length of this circle, which is R theta. So that gives you R theta over T, which is basically R times omega. And the reason for that is because theta over T was defined as omega where omega is the angular velocity so you can even write so you can write down your uh, linear velocity in terms of uh, your angular velocity which uh, you should not be surprised it should have been possible because it was already uh, related the linear velocity was related to the angular velocity sir can you explain it again uh, yeah, of course I can. Uh, which part are you uh, talking about? The formula. Oh, right. So we, uh, why is it like this? Well, uh, so you have to imagine, right? So suppose that you are uh, you have some string attached to a particle or a ball and you're moving it in a circle. When you break the string, what happens is uh, you have to uh, you have to consider this some change in angle change in theta. You have to consider some infinitesimal uh, you can say infinitesimal area or infinitesimal length, which means that very small. So what would ha what was happening just before I cut the string and right at the moment I cut the string. So that's this length over here which is uh, your arc length basically. And the length of this string is basically the radius of the circle that when you are moving your string uh, or the object in a circle, that's uh, R. And the angular displacement just before and right at the moment when you cut the string is this theta. So this gives you this length, which is R, times theta and I want to find the velocity of uh, how fast did this point move to this point. So this point, how fast did this point move to that point? So I'll just take this length that it covered divided by the time that it took to cover that length. So that is this linear velocity. Is it uh, any better now? Yes, sir. Okay, right, perfect. Perfect. So uh, I, I got this notification a couple of minutes ago that this meeting will end in 10 minutes apparently. Uh, okay, do, you, uh, do you see the time that is remaining? Uh, yes. Uh, uh... Two minutes and 54 seconds. Right, so yeah, so we have around three minutes left. So, okay, so is there any question from whatever we have discussed so far? No right, okay. Okay, so. So now uh, I've already explained this thing to you that the direction of the linear velocity is tangent to the circle, right? You can see that because uh, when I drew this thing, so this was just a tangent at this point where the object was, this line was a tangent to that point. And this tangent vector is defined as the linear velocity of this 
uh, object at that particular point. And because it's defined using this tangential vector, it's also referred to as a tangential velocity. Right, so uh, these terms, they're just the same thing, right? Tangential velocity and linear velocity is exactly the same thing. Okay, so, right. Now, if you look, even if you look at this expression for omega, which is angular velocity, and for V, which is the linear velocity, you can immediately tell that the this thing omega, the angular velocity, at every point on your circle would remain constant, right? So when, so if it was moving in this, if it was at this point at some time, or if this ball was at this point at some time, the angular velocity remains constant, right? You can look at this expression and you can tell that. But what, what if I consider the linear velocity? Now, linear velocity is clearly if I have uh, points that are away from this axis, this, uh, this, this line. So for example, the length of the string gets larger, right? What happens then? Then uh, I cannot draw it properly over here, but uh, this, this, is a, this is still moving in a circle and the length of the string is now some R prime. What happens then? The, tangential velocity would increase. And you can see that from this expression because the tangential velocity is proportional to the radius r. So if I increase the length of my string, uh, then the linear velocity would increase. So what is happening is that if I use a longer 